Pre-Calc chapter 11, section 2, part B. So we're going to look at just finding limits of the difference of quotient. So we first need to review what the difference of quotient is, uh, way back from chapter 1, I believe. And here is the difference of quotient. And let's um, find the difference of quotient for this expression. So the substitution occurs again. So f of x plus h means we put x plus h in for our function here of f. So we put them both in for x, um, x plus h in for both x's. So the first one is x squared, but again, x is x plus h. So it's x plus h squared plus our other x, which still is x plus h. So we put in x plus h for both x's there. So this is like x squared plus x when x is x plus h. But then we have to do the same thing here yeah, I write minus f of x, so let's subtract the function f of x. Now whenever you do this, make sure you show that in parentheses, because you need to subtract the quantity that negative gets distributed through. And then it's all over h. So now, after you have the substitution, now you have a bunch of algebra. So x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. We still have plus x plus h. And then we have a minus x squared minus x when we distribute the negative here through the parentheses. Still all over h. We can look at the reducing. So we have an x squared here minus x squared. And we have an x minus x. So we end up with 2xh plus h squared plus h all over h. Now the numerator has h in every term so we can factor that h out and we're left with 2x plus h plus 1 all over h. Then you can see how the h is reduced to 1 and you end up with just 2x plus h plus 1. So what does that mean? What's the point of this? This is, this is how we find the difference of quotient but there is some meaning to this. The difference of quotient, if you look at how it's created, the numerator is found by subtracting two functions, which f of x just means like y. So this is like a y2 minus y1. The bottom is h. Well, what does h represent? h is the distance from one x to another. So if I call this x, then this right here is going to be x plus h. And that's what we're saying here in the equation because x is the original value for x. x plus h is h more than x. So we start at x, we add h to it, we get x plus h. So our distance here is h. And that's our denominator. This point right here would have a y value of f of x. This point here is going to have a y value of f of x plus h. So then if we subtract the two, we are finding the distance from one y value to the other. So really we're finding this h value and then this y value. So what are we doing when we divide those? We're dividing the change in y divided by change in x, which is known as slope. So we're actually finding slope here. So slope is the change in y over change in x. That's what we're finding. And so the secant line is the line that goes between these two points. We have another line. Now let's combine that content right there to the limits. The green line right here is the secant line. So this is the, so this is the secant. The tangent line is when it only intersects at one point. So the red one is the tangent. And those are the definitions where if we have our curve here, look at the curve in blue. Here's the curve. The red line is heading at one point. The green one is heading at two points. So that's the difference between secant and tangent. And so the tangent is what we end up finding. We want the limit as h approaches zero. So we're letting this distance h we want h to approach zero. So what we end up doing is we end up finding the slope at x. 
so at one point an instantaneous slope where is this useful so if we look at this graph and give it some values a lot of these graphs we have a time on the x-axis and we have a distance on the y-axis so we divide that distance divided by time what does that represent that's a speed or a rate so then our slope is a rate so what we end up finding is we actually find the actual rate at an instantaneous time so in any single time what is the actual speed so that's one example of this so given the function f of x here let's find the limit as h approaches zero of this difference of quotient so we have to find the difference of quotient and then we'll do the substitution for the limit as h approaches zero um, because we cannot put h in uh, zero for h right away we'll always get zero in the denominator so let's throw in our substitution here so our function is two times x squared again x is x plus h we have plus one and then we're going to subtract f of x which is 2x squared plus one all over h so that's the difference of quotient for the function but realize that in this problem we actually know it's not x it's two i can replace my x values here with two so it's actually going to be two plus h the quantity squared so we know what value of x we're, we're trying to find this this uh slope for. So if I FOIL that, I get 4 plus 2h plus h squared. I'm also going to evaluate this. So we have 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. So if I distribute the 2, I'm getting 8 plus 4h plus 2h squared plus 1 minus 9. Average. So then we look at some reducing here because we have an 8 plus a 1 is 9 and we have minus 9 so that's 0. So we end up with a 4h plus 2h squared all over h. If we reduce out the h here we get 4 plus 2h. So we don't just want to find the, the difference quotient, we want to find the limit as h approaches 0 of this. And so we just used direct substitution so this is going to be 4. So what, is this, what does this represent? Well, if we look at the graph of that, that's a parabola that's opening up here. And so if we look, we have something like this. If we look at x equals 2, and we look at the slope at that point, the tangent line at that point is going to have a slope of 4. And that's what we just found. So the difference of quotient when you're given that limit you're finding the actual slope at this x value 2 direct substitution in the direct substitution in the into the difference of quotient always produces the indeterminate form which is 0 over 0 so then we can't uh, just find the limit with direct substitution we actually have to use our algebra to help us simplify it and really what you need is you need to be able to reduce those h's out so let's go through this one. This is a more complicated one where if you look at we have a fraction that we're going to be substituting. So we have 1 over x, but again, x is, then we're going to subtract f of x, which is just 1 over x minus 1, all over h. So here we have fractions within fractions, and we got to deal with the simplifying here. I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom. I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom by the common denominator of the denominators within within the numerator. So we're going to multiply the top here by x plus h minus one, and then uh, times x minus one. We're going to multiply the same thing on the bottom. When I do that, the top reduces here because we have an x plus h minus 1 reduces with x plus h minus 1. So I have this 1 here times the x minus 1. So it just moves it to the numerator. And I have the same thing or similar thing on the other one. We have x minus 1 reduced with x minus 1. And we have 1 times x plus h minus 1. And it's after the minus, so use the parentheses. 
is all over h, but we're still multiplying it by that mess, the x plus h minus 1 times x minus 1. We're still multiplying the denominator by that as well. So the numerator, when I simplify that, I'm getting x minus 1 distribute the negative, so negative x minus h plus 1 all over this denominator. So our numerator, then we have x minus x and negative 1 plus 1. So we have a negative h over h times. Now I'm not multiplying through the, with this because right here I can see that the h here, h here and the h here reduce. Uh, h over h is the 1. So we get negative 1 over x plus h minus 1 times x minus 1. Now that I have the difference of quotient here figured out, now I can actually find the limit. So I want the limit as h approaches 0 of this fraction. So now I can use direct substitution, just plug 0 in for both of the h's. Actually, one, plug 0 in for h, and we get negative 1 over x minus 1 the quantity squared. So this right here would be a formula or an equation for all the different slopes given x. So I told you x is 3, then I can plug 3 in for x and solve it and get negative 1 fourth is the slope. So I know at x equals 3, I know the slope would be negative 1 fourth. So we can use it to find the slope at any of the tangent lines. So another problem here, where here is our function. Let's plug it in. So we have f of x plus h, so it's 3 times x plus h minus 1, minus f of x, which is the 3x minus 1, all over h. Let's do some algebra here, so distribute. And reduce. We'll simplify. 3h over h. Now I can reduce. You get 3. So 3 is the answer here. We don't have to do the limit. The limit as h approaches 0 of 3 is 3. Why does that make sense? We'll look at the problem. What does this mean? When we do the difference in quotient and we find the value, this is our slope. We'll look at the problem. The slope was a line, so we already knew that. That is our slope. So we know from previous knowledge that the number multiplied by x is a slope. Well, the difference quotient is also finding the slope. This is a line, so it's not going to change. The line always has a slope of 3. Now, if it's a parabola, the slope changes as you move along it. So you might get an equation in x value. So as x changes, the slope changes. So this process right here is one of the huge things in calculus. Calculus studies the rate of change of a function. That's what we're doing. We're looking at the rate of change of any function, not just lines. So slope is for a line. The rate of change is between any two points. To find the rate of change at a single point, we use the slope of a tangent line. So slope of the tangent line is what we're using with the difference of quotient and finding the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference of quotient. That's what we're doing in 11.2b. So that is it. Have a great night.